online special lecture organized by the IQAC Snot College to commemorate the 180th anniversary of the arrival of the Welsh Christian missionary Reverend Thomas John and his wife Anne John at Sora on 2nd June 1841. The government of Meghalaya has officially notified 22nd June as Thomas Jones Day to be observed in the 6th district of the Khasi and Jainta Hills, that is the East Khasi Hills, the West Khasi Hills, the Southwest Khasi Hills, the Ribhoi district, the East Jainta Hills and the West Jainta Hills. On this occasion, it is my honor and privilege to welcome Dr. Eileen T. Nongbri, Associate Professor, Department of Kasi Shilong College. We are really grateful to you for being with us on this online program to deliver among us the special lecture on the contribution and legacy of Reverend Thomas John. I would also like to welcome my colleagues, our Vice Principal, Sir S. Jirwa, Dr. M. Rani, and Dr. Mrs. Jilingdo, Coordinator IQAC. I also extend my warm welcome to all the faculty members and staff and students of Snod College. I also extend my welcome to all the guests who join us on this online program. Before I hand over to Madam Nongbri to deliver the lecture, first I would like to introduce Madam. Madam Nongbri, she is an associate professor of the Department of Khasi Shlong College. She completed her master degree, Master of Philosophy and PhD from University of Shlong. She has also published numerous publications in reputed journals. She is also a member of the professional bodies like the Northeast Tribal Forum, member of the editorial board Twitching Staff, and moderator of the literary program, women's program, Nalingwear of the All India Radio Shlong and Kendra Shlom. Welcome, Madam. And now I'll request Madam Nongri to deliver the lecture. A very good afternoon to all the participants, especially to the faculty of the Synod College. And first and foremost, my hearted gratitude and well wishes to the principal of Synod College, Sir Richard. Sir, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I'm so reluctant in the beginning when Sir said to deliver a lecture on this auspicious day of this great man, Reverend Thomas Jones, because I was from the Khasi background. I will have so many loopholes and shortcomings and we are not so very fluent in English also. I apologize at the very outset if there is any grammatical mistakes from my point of view. I also would like to apologize because I chaired the program webinar program of the Kasi Author Society, which we were supposed to start at 11 a.m and end up by 1 p.m. But you know, so once started with the seminar, then there are so many feedbacks also. We have to do all the formalities. That's what I apologize as a principal and to delay the program a little bit. Thank you so much all of you for sparing your valuable times and also to bear with me for my delay. Without further ado, the 180 years celebration of Reverend Thomas Jones, the great man, the author, 
the publisher, the administrator, the statesman, the educator, and also a man whom we called him a missionary with visionary. He lived a very short life, only 39 years old. He was born in 1810 at Tenefred, and his mission started when he entered and he landed in Kasi Hills, at the foothills of the Kasi and Jaita Hills on the 22nd June 1841. It is not at all new for this great man, but of course, every day is new as a scholars to collect the memories and also to recall the great work of this great man. He started his journey from Liverpool along with his wife on the 25th November 1840 and he arrived at Sora on the 22nd June 1841. So we could understand the journey which is a very long days and months, six months and 27 days. He arrived at Sora in the midst of the monsoon. Geographically, Sora has been known as the wettest place in the world. Yes, this great man also. He arrived Sora the place where it is the wettest at the height of the monsoon season. On landing and entering into our beloved hills, we could imagine this great man, he's had to venture with a new language, new culture, and new atmosphere. It is not an easy task for this great man to start or to propagate the gospel. Yes, he had come all along the way as a missionary to propagate the gospel and the love of God. But how to encounter with people with the new language, new thoughts, new culture, a new atmosphere, being a man of determination, being a man who sacrificed himself. Yes, it is true till date that we acknowledge him as the father of the Kasti alphabet and the father of the founding of Kasti literature. Before we come to that, let me highlight some of his great work and contribution. His legacy on our foothills and also his great work as a man of vision. Learning the language which is not his mother tongue is not an easy task. Learning to accept the semantics, the styles of speaking is not an easy task. And learning of a new language was not also an easy job for any one of us. It was only with a strong determination that within a period of seven to eight months, he had made sufficient progress so as to enable him to preach to the people in their own language. What I mean to see here, that he preached the gospel in the language of the Kasi people. He preached the gospel where each one 
of the local people could understand. So, still his journey is not, it doesn't end up there. He had the vision to propagate the gospel through education. With this aim, and within, within a span of 18 months, just a span of 18 months, he was able to revive the school education, which had earlier failed to take off by the Sarampo Baptist Mission. The three schools that Reverend Thomas Jones set up was in Mausmai, Maumlu, and Sora. But before reopening and setting up of these schools, he had trained the native Kasi to become the future teachers to help the locality, the local people to understand, to educate them. He trained these young people in his own residence, which is known as the Mission School House in Nongsaulia in Sora. Interestingly, Reverend Thomas Jones also, as a man of vision, he had really come up with the idea of educating people by appointing Lord Shai to teach in Mausmai. The second school, he appointed Nissing Seemly to be the teacher in Maumlo LP school. And the last one, which he opened the school, set up the school, is it in Sora. It was here that Jum became the teacher and all the three teachers, thank to this great man, these three teachers, that they, their dedication, their hard work, and also their eagerness were so fruitful and all the products they produced from these schools were really a meaningful products. Not only to that extent, at the same time, we could see Reverend Thomas Jones. He was learning Kasi and using Welsh orthography to cast the language in the written form. Although earlier attempts to reduce Kasi to the complex Bengali script had proved unsuccessful. But most authorities continued to advocate perseverance with it. I quote Thomas Jones as tenacious as he was inventive, pressed on with the Roman script, devising a form for the written language that, with some adaptations, still holds good today. And quote from Nigel Jenkins. Reverend Thomas Jones opted to transcribe the language into the Roman alphabet because he felt this was more adaptable to the Kasi language when hearing at them conversing in their home place, conversing at their workplace, in the farm, in the agricultural land, in the marketplace, Reverend Thomas Jones, he understood and he experimented that Roman alphabet had turned out to be more successful. And this has remained in use till today, earning him the reputed title as the father of the Kasi alphabet. He had introduced the 21 alphabet. Let me read.
three doubt. A, B, K, D, A, X, N, S, E, J, L, M, N, O, P, R, S, T, U, W, Y. Yes, in the Khasi, we have Yi and N. Yi as Yi, the noun. N pronounced Nya, noun. And N, Nya, E, N. But Jibon Roy, in the later year, he had introduced these two alphabets, adding the Yi and N, which till date become the 23 Kasi alphabet. Furthermore, it was this great man who was able to encapsulate the distinctive pronunciation, intonations, and accents of Kasi words, utilizing the Roman alphabet and provide a usable transcription of the language. He may truly be regarded as the founding of the father of the Kasi orthography. Then coming to the literature, we could see this great man as the founding father of the Kasi literature. It was in the year early 1842 that Thomas Jones has to his credit the honor of being the author come publisher of the first five Cassie books. First five Cassie books were introduced in the schools and also were taught to the students. And these books, I don't know whether they are still exist till date. I try to find out some of the books are still lying with GRTS, but some are not. I regret to say that if we have to observe this great day, if we have to observe the contributions and the legacy of this great man, the library are the first hand information to collect the work of this great man. His first book, the first Kasi reader title, Kakitap Ninkong Banikai Kule Kakitin Kasi. I pronounce as it is because I'll read the spelling where Romans. The Reverend Thomas Jones wrote C A K C I T A P T A P K I T A P N Y N N Y N C O N B. Okay, I'll go with Kasi again. C A C E T A P N Y N C O N B A N H-E-C-R-E-P-U-L-A-C-R-C-E-C-E-T-E-N-C-R-S-S-E. -S -S -E. And if we translate it, it's Kakita Ningkong Banhikai Pule Kaktin Kasi. We owe our gratitude to this great man. Though we found the spelling, he wrote it in the Roman alphabet where K, K has been replaced by C. But it is well understood that the book, First Cassie Reader, is really a meaningful one. The second book, Kakotikir, it, it was a translation from the Welsh Rudman, Mother's Gift. 
and the other book is Kakot Nong Yelang. Then he translated the Gospel of Umati or the Gospel of Saint Matthew. And the last one, he is concerned on the health of the people and their well-being. And this book, it narrates on the health reader. This is the first Kasi health reader. All these books and all these publications in the tribes, he did it in the, in the language of the Kasi. And in, the own, in our own language, mark the modest beginning of the Kasi literature. Furthermore, Reverend Thomas Jones was not content only with simply preaching the gospel, but also he is attempting to improve the physical and personal well being of the people. Of course, at the initial stage and at the initial trust of this great man's work was on de developing language, spreading of education, publication of books with the aim of propaga propagating the gospel. But he also utilized the skills and knowledge which he had acquired as a young man at home in Avril, Wales. These knowledge he had acquired as a miller, stone mason, wheelwright, blacksmith, carpenter, and a farm, farm worker to advance the socio-economic status of the people. He addressed himself briskly the, to the practicalities of the situation. He showed the Kasipnas how to use a ripsaw to win plans from the three trunk instead of hacking at the wood with as to fashion just one crude board. And as a craftsman, he taught them accounting and the crafts of blacksmith and mason. He persuaded them to use coal to burn their lime instead of scars and time wasting wood. Some of our observer said, and they pen now saying that Reverend Thomas Jones helping the people, teaching the people the practice of burning limestone with coal was found to have reduced the cost of production of lime by a third. Besides considerably saving the precious, precious forests and woodlands. He also improved their methods of agriculture, farming, and plantation. To improve the method of growing potatoes, vegetables, Reverend Thomas Jones taught the people the technique of tangbun, tangbun, which is a limited and organized form of chum cultivation. Tangbun is a procedure of slashing the unwanted shrubs and bushes, which after being arranged in uniform rows are covered with a thin layer of earth. The shrubs 
are then burnt down to increase the fertility of the soil, which at the same time burns out the unwanted weeds and skills the living organism and germs that destroy the crops. It should be mentioned, though, that this procedure is entirely different form and should not be confused with Tang Shi. Tang Shi is an unorganized massive slash and burn procedure of all shrubs, trees, and bamboos. The practice of Thang Shikti is common, commonly found among most northeastern tribes who use it to cultivate crops in their hilly terrain. This is found to be harmful to the environment due to massive and one unwarranted destruction of forest and vegetation. The technique of Thangbun, on the other hand, is eco-friendly and it is the preferred practice till date among Kasi Gadvedas. So, we can call this great man that he was also an environmentalist. Reverend Thomas Jones was also responsible for teaching for teaching the people about tea plantation. He believed that it would pay rich dividends to the farmers. Unfortunately, he had to leave the Cassiers in the midst of this job. Furthermore, he taught them more the hygienic methods of distilling their native brew. When come to this great man as a mason, as a carpenter, as scaving, mansory and stonework, Reverend Thomas Jones was also known as the first person who have taught the Khasi people the technique to use the chisel to polish rough stones for erecting masonry walls. With regard to stone wall, it is important to note that as Yai Krang Nongpri noted it, the entire Khasi land is famous for its presence of massive stones or monoliths known in Khasi as Maubinna. They were present in countless numbers, spread across the mountains, plateau, and valleys. Also at astonishing, indeed, that the Khasi were able to erect such large stones with their bare hands and without the aid of modern machines. Truly an indication of their great physical strength, wisdom and valor. But however, in spite of these abilities, had enabled them to erect such large stones, they had yet to learn the skill of constructing building walls, retaining walls and other structures with smooth polish stones. Therefore, we could see that his skill work, the great man taught the Kasi to use a chisel to polish and smoothen the gray stones which were found in abundance in and around the Kasi Hills. The skills imparted by Reverend Thomas Jones enabled them to beautify and improve their stonework construction. With regard to masonry and stonework, a 
clear distinction has to be made between the Khasis of Sora and the Khasis of Jantipur. The Khasis of Sora has considerably benefited from the teachings imparted by Reverend Thomas Jones. On the other hand, the Khasis of Jantipur, Borkhat, Sindai had already acquired the skill of erecting palaces temples and other sanitary structures like swimming pools with stone materials from Hindus and Muslims which are the neighbors well before the arrival of Reverend Thomas Jones. But we endure a gratitude to this great man Reverend Thomas Jones till did that the abundance of the stones found in the foot of the Kasi hills and as one Kasi observer said it was the skill of Thomas Jones that we the Kasi Sora could learn to polish the stones one Kasi observer also observe, said, quote, He is like God and can do everything. What a commencement by this layman, Reverend Thomas Jones' contribution was exceptional towards the Kasi language and the unity receives appreciations even from other non presbyterian church leaders who have a broader mindset for the Padres Maori of the society of don bosco stb compare the role of reverend thomas jones with what martin luther and dante allegri did to the germany and italy respectively Oh, we need to learn from the history of our great nations. The German tribes before the arrival, arrival of Martin Luther were divided by languages. They spoke different dialects and were even at war with each other. But with Luther's Bible written in one German language, soon the whole of Germany accepted this as the national language and that was how the German tribes were unified. So also with Italians before the arrival of Dante Allegri, Dante brought a greater unification of the Italian people through a standard Florentine Italian given by him which was accepted by other regions. Let us not forget that we too had many dialects in the past. Fortunately, the Welsh missionaries and Reverend Thomas Jones in particular gave us the Sora dialect, which was made literary language and gradually became a universal language for the Kasis. This is a great blessing because it has really unified our people for the past decades. So we are really, really endowed with the greatness of Reverend Thomas Jones. His contribution, his great work He's not an only not only a missionary, but he has a vision. He's not an only an educator, but if we clock in one, we could say that he's a great statesman. Why? 
because it was Reverend Thomas Jones with his arrival that paved the way for the establishment of a standard Kasi language, which was ultimately accepted and recognized in the year 2005 by the government of Meghalaya as the associate official language for the entire Kasi race. Reverend Thomas Jones was a man of intelligence and talents, interested not only on spiritual welfare, but also to the social, the economic, social welfare of the people. In conclusion, I want to end up with this few words, honor and love by the people of Ukhindriyam Upnar Uphoi Uwar Ulenam. References for this lecture today is from Nigel Through the Green Door Travel Among the Kasis, John Hughes Morris, The History of the Welsh Calvinistic Methodist for a Mission Liverpool, KGP Assembly, a brief life sketch on the life and works of Reverend Thomas Jones, R.S. Lindo, Ka History, Katho Katar, Kabinda Bangong. And I owe my gratitude and acknowledgement to the Rikasi Book Agency and also to Reverend B.L. Nombri. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Nongri, for the insightful lecture. And now I'll request my colleagues, Ms. Dimsimais AM, Head Department of Kasi Snow College, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, good sir, afternoon. I could hear you. Sir? Hello. Yes. I couldn't hear you. Louder, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Okay. Then now I'll request my colleagues, Ms. Dimsimais Aim of the Head Department of the Kassisner College to propose the Board of Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As we come to the end of today's program, it is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks. First and foremost, I want to thank a guest speaker this afternoon, Dr. A. Nongri, for delivering the special lecture on the late Reverend Thomas Jones. Through her talk, Dr. E. Nongbri has given us valuable information and insight into the life and contribution of this great man who has contributed so much to the language and literature of the Kasi society. I had been greatly benefited by this talk and I hope so do our students. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. A. Nongbri. May God bless you. I would also like to express my thank to a principal, Dr. R. M. Lingdo, for giving the welcome address and for his support to the college always. Thank you, sir. My thank also goes to the IQAC Synod College for organizing this special program. Special thanks 
to Sir Joshi, head of BCA Department Synod College, for helping out with um, technical arrangement to enable this online program to be conducted smoothly. Finally, I want to thank and appreciate all my fellow colleagues and dear students for participating this special lecture. This program is a success because of your presence. If I have missed out on anyone, kindly accept my apologies. Once again, to one and all, thank you so much. Kublai Shibun. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has been a part of uh, today's program. And uh, I hope and I trust that we have learned much from what has been shared, from what has been uh, talked about this afternoon. And I hope that it will help us to value and respect the legacy of this great man, the late Reverend Thomas Jones, father of the Kasi alphabet and pioneer in so many areas and fields in the social economic uh, life of the Kasi. So once again, thank you so much to everyone for being a part of today's program. Have a good day. God bless you and stay safe. Thank you very much.